Jason, I want to come back uh, to you and ask about how your firm has been able to scale up rapidly. What's been key to your success? What's been kind of your competitive edge over others in the marketplace? Sure. I would say, you know, my colleagues and I have spent the, the bulk of our early careers trying to solve complex, sophisticated problems and having an asset allocation arm to the business, but also a, a multifamily office and family office advice side, as well as coming from the Scripps family office prior to working with Heritage. You know, solving complex problems deepens things that DJ was talking about, where you earn the trust from people that have the wealth and want to allocate capital. And predominantly in the family office space, as DJ also pointed out, most of family offices are not professional investors when they made all their money. They convert to that when they have a liquidity event. So building that trust and, and going through the, the depth of explanation, I think is extremely valuable. And, and that's why we've been able to advise not only in the assets that we manage, but advise on, you know, hundred million dollar, two hundred million dollars, three hundred million dollar businesses for many of our families because we have that trust of their holistic financial life, not just we're the best private equity allocator that they know. Got it. And then like what would be like the number one go to strategy that's worked for your firm for getting the attention of those great families? Is it offering potential ideas and insights before they're even a client and then they know what you're talking about because you've added so much value over a cup of coffee or what's kind of your go to approach for bringing those clients in? I think it's really tax centric. So, you know, we can talk a lot about the, the best investment strategies and, and the way that endowments and foundations invest, but we forget that all those institutions use alternatives and private equity and real estate, but none of them have to pay taxes. And so we have a prospective client. If we're lucky, we get to know them five or six years before they sell their company and we can help them save taxes on the transaction. Very more likely we get to know wealthy families after they've sold the company and they go, oh crap, I just paid $20 million in taxes. What do I do now? And so we, I think, become really skilled at explaining the value of using private market investments, but then also being thoughtful about how to put those in tax-free uppers. Maybe it's retirement accounts, maybe it's private placement life insurance, and some other open architecture vehicle where you can wrap the high compounding nature of private investments and mitigate the, the timing inefficiencies, the tax inefficiencies that come along with those high return strategies. Got it. Yeah. The number one takeaway from our tax strategy series where we interviewed a lot of experts was like, every deal you do can be made more tax efficient or be made through a tax efficient account. But if you haven't gone down that rabbit hole, you don't know the 50 tools in the box to potentially take out for different situations along the way. And if you don't know the tools exist, then you're just going to be paying maximum taxation. So by law, you're not allowed to dodge taxes, but as a steward of your own wealth, it's your responsibility to navigate the tax code and to know what's relevant to your area, what's most likely applies. And studying this could, you know, cut your taxes down by 10, 20, 50%. If you do all your research or much more, but 80% of those options are off the table after you have an exit. Um, and so planning before you have an exit is absolutely critical. And anyone who's done a lot of research on the tax code will tell you that same thing. So I'm glad that's naturally came up. DJ. I, I seem to be plugging you every time I'm up here, but I just wanted to make a note, uh, having to do with families and, and relationships. And I, I have raised money from, from a number of families and one, it is the relationship and it is giving value, right? The, the biggest response I got from an email was simply talking about cost segregation one time and just explaining that, you know, and, um, it, this is how you, you, the important with family offices is that they'll take your call. That comes from relationships. And now I'm going to tell you how I pitched families and this is about six months down the road. Are you ready for this? Good. And hey, we're working on a deal. You want to take a look at it? That's it. Because once they say yes, the door is open. And the best book I've actually ever read to on family offices and raising capital is from Richard. It's absolutely fantastic if you haven't read it. And if you want to know what you need to do, just see everything that he does and replicate it. Because we all know what we need to do. We just don't do it. It's nice of DJ to say that, but honestly, if I knew everything would have a hundred million in revenue and I'd have 250 staff members, not 25. So it's nice of you to say that. Appreciate that. Um, and appreciate your insights there. Education is how I built our company. There's many ways to skin a cat, but that's how we build relationships. 